Hey, what's going on? Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how I use the MIDI Fighter Twister inside of Loopy Pro. First, I'm going to show you how I use the MIDI Fighter Twister to control different things inside Loopy Pro. After that, I'll show you how I set it up. Let's go. Alright, so I'm going to go through a couple of things and how I have them set up here with the twister. I have Koala effects on my master, so I've got a filter here, and I have the button position set to return to zero, so I don't have to search for that middle point where the effect is off when I'm doing a sweep. And I have almost... Um, I would say I have all my effects set up that way. I have some sends set up with uh, delay and reverb for each track. So, like my guitar track. I have a separate one for drums. You can accent the snare. cool stuff you probably heard that arpeggio come in what you're hearing there is drambo okay now i have a second page that's set up for drambo you access that by the side buttons setting up uh the twister with drambo is going to be its own video so if you uh if you're interested go ahead and subscribe i'm going to be putting out that video within the next few weeks here right now I just have this knob mapped to the crossfader. So much fun. Yeah. Okay. I actually have some uh, send effects on my mic too. I can bring in a delay or a, a reverb on this. Let's jump over to the MIDI Fighter utility and I'll show you how I have things set up on the MIDI Fighter side. Then we'll jump into Loopy Pro and I'll show you how I have this mapped. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, while we're on our way over to look at the MIDI fighter utility, um, just wanted to say I appreciate you guys. And um, I'm a very small channel, very new channel, trying to find more time to do these videos. And I uh, hope you guys will subscribe, all that stuff. I'd love to see you around. Utility, okay, so here we are in our MF utility. Let's start with just one encoder. Let's start with a simple encoder that I have mapped to my send. This list here is what you're concerned with. Um, for, for sensitivity, you're going to want responsive. Um, High resolution is for very fine adjustments. Um, there's definitely there's definitely applications where that could be useful, but for live performance, uh, personally, I think it's too fine of an adjustment. This indicator type is going to be how the bar displays as you turn the knob. Um, you can either have a blended bar, a dot or a solid bar, I believe. I've just always had mine on a blended bar. If you, if you want to use the dot, it can give you an indication of um, some exact settings. So that will be to your taste. Uh, the super knob, that's a, that's a whole nother video there. And honestly, I haven't messed with it much at all. But it's a way to get more than one function out of one knob. Now, I talked about the switch action type earlier. And reset encoder value is what you need if you want to be able to tap that switch and have your setting return to the zero or the off setting so for my purposes i have i have these knobs set up to have the switch action type as a reset coder and value now if you set these to send either cc's or notes that's basically going to act like a midi button um, and you can send specific cc's uh, to Loopy Pro, and you, you could really do some interesting things. You could, you know, you could trigger your loops. You can toggle different things on and off. There's a video out there on YouTube of this guy using the twister, uh, kind of like an APC. So it's triggering scenes, and you could really you could get by with just this one controller if you really wanted to go with the minimal setup. It's got four different banks, um, so that's something to consider. I've never messed with any of these other ones. I just use CC. And if you open up this dialog here, uh, you actually want to open both these dialogs, and I, I can give you one tip. If you're using multiple controllers in Loopy Pro, which I'm currently using three different ones. I'm using the Twister, the Launchpad Pro Mark III, and also the Morningstar MC8 down on the floor. You definitely want to start keeping a note somewhere with all your MIDI channels and what everything, you know, what MIDI channel belongs to what, because it gets really confusing, uh, at least for me. So I actually have a whiteboard up on the wall right now with a list of my MIDI controllers, uh, what MIDI channel they're sending on and what they're sending to. So I can keep track of all this. Uh, back to the encoder switch MIDI settings. Uh, whatever channel you want to use is up to you. And just so it makes sense to me, I just start in the lower left-hand corner. I start at... Um, MIDI number one and work my way up to 16 and that just keeps things kind of organized in my mind. I do the same thing uh, with the rotary encoder. You know, like if I were to click down here you can see it's encoder number one. Uh, if, you, if you look here you can see it's encoder MIDI number one, switch MIDI number one. I go over here, I go up to two, three, four, and so on. You get up to here, we're at 16. That just keeps it nice and organized. I'm using a separate MIDI channel for encoders and a separate MIDI channel for switches. 
uh, because I don't I don't want to accidentally be sending the same MIDI message to something, so I, I want to keep those separate. Um, however, on this page, you know, I don't know what I'm using this role for. I, I think maybe I have not assigned this role yet. I have this role set up as switches or note toggles, what what is what they call here, but. Um, the rest of them I have all set up to, if you look up here, reset encoder value, reset encoder value, because I want those to easily return to zero. I feel like a broken record when I'm saying this, but in, when you're performing, you don't want to have to try to find um, your starting point with an effect. It's so nice just to be able to slap that knob. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't sound right. Um, anyway, and return to your default setting. You'll notice these are all red. That's that's my on color, so that's the color that the LEDs will display when you push down. It's not so important with the way this page is currently set up. Um, the off color, that's the color that it will display um, all the time until you press the button. When you have them to when you have them set to reset encoder value, they actually, the off color doesn't even display. So that that off color is not, or sorry, the on color is not relevant to this setup. It will be in my Drambo MIDI Fighter Twister setup though. So um, we can get into that in the next video when we get into Drambo and the Twister. Uh, one thing to note here, on my lower left hand knob, and I, you probably can't see this in the video, but if you look at my settings at the top, I have has detent checked. And what that does, it'll give you an LED at the 12 o'clock position. And because of the way this filter works, it's a like a DJ filter, um, high pass on one side, low pass on the other, and bypass or dry right up at 12 o'clock in the middle. I want that detent up there just so I can quickly look down at my twister and know if I've bumped this knob or if I have forgot to have it return to zero because I don't want to go like halfway through a song and wonder why I'm lacking low end or why I'm lacking high end or something because I forgot to reset my filter. So I have that detent on there as sort of a visual uh, reminder of where I'm at with that filter. Okay, the first thing I'll show you is the sends, which they're just, they're that easy. Um, you go over here to MIDI Learn. And as you see, hopefully you can see that on the screen. As I move this knob, you can see the, you can see the sends here moving. So those are already mapped, but if you were to want to map them, let's say you want to map this one. I'll just remove the existing mapping. So this is what you'll see. You click on learn and it says listening for MIDI. So really all you got to do is wiggle the knob on your controller. I'm about to do it. There we go. You can see it pick that up. Now it says also two other actions. That's because I also have this same knob already mapped to these other whoops, to these other two A sends. So I can control all those with one knob. You might not want to do that, but I'm just trying to make my life a little bit easier and give myself less to think about on stage. So the mapping for, for controlling like an audio unit is a little bit different because there's not a direct MIDI learn right now. So you go up here, go to MIDI control, Going to my main profile, you're going to see a lot here because I have a lot of other things going on. Um, and here you see the MIDI Fighter Twister. If you haven't mapped anything yet, you might not see that. Um, so you go all the way to the bottom, add a new binding. I'm going to go down to Effect Actions and Adjust Effect Parameter. Open that. Go to target. In this case, I'm looking at Koala effects. And here you go. You have all your 
all your different parameters that you could control. On the first one I showed you, for example, the filter. Let's click on filter. Action adjust continuously. So how do you map it? You go back one. Now it says listening for events. That's what you want to see. You just go ahead and wiggle your knob. There it is. Getting a little error message because I already have this mapped. So you, if you were doing this for the first time, you would just hit save and then you'd be good to go.